I don't build, we're not building Scarlet to not be the best console. What is going on guys, this is Dealer here back again talking about Phil Spencer's recent Giant Bomb interview where he confirmed several different things, including their plan to be the fastest console come 2020. We'll get into that, but among these other things, Phil Spencer also confirmed millions and millions of Game Pass subscribers. Also, Xbox Project Scarlet, there are a couple questions surrounding the box, and Phil Spencer actually responds to some of the criticism regarding his wording and the messaging of the Project Scarlet trailer. Yes, it could have been better. And honestly, Xbox would have been better off putting some of this in their trailer. But hey, that's why I'm bringing it to you now, so you know. They're not playing around with this box. It's definitely going to be some serious kit. He is also asked about a second Xbox of some kind, though it is not the question I would have asked. A lot of good stuff here, guys. Let's get into it. Is that how you feel about Scarlet? Do you feel like with, with Scarlet, you really want to be out there more powerful than everything else? How important is raw power to I you think raw power point. is very important um, and I know certain people are kind of picking up on the words that I use and hey you used to say most powerful I really can only control the console I build I don't have a ps5 dev kit so I, right. I don't yeah, know yeah. Um, what they are uh, what they're building um, we both are AMD you know the the kind of spectrum of technologies that are out there are pretty similar at some level it's going to be what price point do you pick right um, so I didn't. I don't want it to get into kind of a, a, a silliness. Like I want to build a great uh, Project Scarlet. I want people to feel like they've had. They can have amazing console experiences they've never seen before, mm -hmm. um, and that they've got the best lineup of content and services of any platform out there. And we're totally focused on that. And I know we have other things going with like coming to PC and XCloud. Um, but I'll say that you know being a leader in console is something that uh, the team is committed. To, to doing and and that's the we're not building this this program to to try to aim for second place we were going right. to build it aiming for first place and um, and that's that's what I want to hit we are not building this thing to be in second place we want to be in first place the team is committed to being in first place now last time I checked that is far more than Sony has said about the PlayStation 5 so why is it that people persist in saying that the PS5 is going to be better has Sony said this has Sony confirmed anything that's a genuine question I have not been able to find anything that Sony has said that would allude to being the better console of course I want both systems to be as fast as possible possible as the consumer you should but why people are running around saying playstation 5 is going to be faster i don't really know there are no new rumors that weren't around six months ago and if it is faster hey that's great for sony fans but we have to wait and see as of right now bill spencer said it himself they plan on building this thing to be the best and it may come down to the price point they may decide to go a tier higher they may decide to deliver like they did with the xbox one x and say hey you know what we're gonna have less compromises but we're gonna be more expensive question is what happens if sony does the same but they eat a hundred dollars on every system sold but then again couldn't microsoft do the same there are too many variables let me know what you think down below what i do know is that if they are going to have this hardware they need the software and the art direction to leverage this hardware personally i would like more graphically intensive games to leverage the ridiculous hardware microsoft are delivering gears of war 5 is going to be one of the best looking games of all time i want more of those not saying they don't have them now but i want more let me know if you agree down below will there be another x or upgraded version of scarlet down the line uh what, what do you what do you think i obviously i don't know you know you're kind of, like, yeah you of course you wouldn't know but like you know what what do you what do you think i will say what we're planning for yeah um we're not planning for scarlet to be our last console yeah so you know the we're continuing to invest in our hardware team. I know you had Carl on mm -hmm. and like, you know, uh, Liz Hammerin who runs our, our Xbox platform team. We are, we're gonna ship Project Scarlet. We think it's an important design point in the balance between CPU and GPU that we've just never really hit on a console before, yeah. which is gonna help us with, with feel and frame rate and, uh, and, and refresh rate synced with game loops and stuff, which will be really helpful for the feel of games. With X, what we did, and people teased us a little bit about the true 4K, but we wanted to pick a spec that we thought could really deliver 4K games, and we didn't think we could do that until the time. You've heard all this already. Yeah. Um, so the thing for us past Scarlet is what is that next 
inflection point of experience that would actually be meaningful. We thought 4K would be meaningful. You can argue, and if you don't think so, go buy an S or go buy a, a sure, PlayStation yeah. or whatever, right? But if if you if you thought 4K at like six teraflops, all the, the kind of stuff we talked about was the thing that you wanted, we wanted to make sure we had the memory bandwidth and the GPU to deliver 4K scene. I think we have something meaningful at the at the next point, frankly, that that both of us are are, are just about at, from what I know. Beyond that, I don't know mm -hmm. what that is, but we're not planning for not doing another console. Right. Um, and I don't think in that timeline that I'm going to be playing games that feel like my Scarlet games that are streamed, right, right. on a screen yeah. that's 60 inches and, and all that. I don't know. I could be wrong, right? But uh, I, we're, we're going to continue with our xCloud work, um, and we're going to continue with the, the magic that's being put in there. But we look at it as me running local hardware. You know, the analogy I use is going to be important. The analogy I use is, you know, I'm a Spotify subscriber. I'm a Netflix subscriber. It's not like that streaming has actually led to fewer devices around me. If anything, I have more devices around me. True. Yeah. Right. And the price point of a console isn't for everybody, but it's not a thousand bucks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the it goes down over time. Right. Yeah. So the idea that I would have a dedicated machine in my house that plays games really well doesn't seem foreign to me, even if I'm streaming games a lot of the time. Um, but I, again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, we don't yet know what past Scarlet would be the thing. We don't have a need to do one like two or three years after that. Yeah. Um, we would just continue to focus on, is there something meaningful from an experience that we can or so there's a lot to take in here. For one, he confirms that console gaming isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And if you actually listen to the full interview, which I really, really encourage everyone to do, I'll link that down below. He speaks several times on streaming and how it's not going to replace your local hardware. In fact, it's not going to give you anywhere near the experience that this console is going to give you. And that's pretty much common sense. But hey, I always see people out there worried about these types of things for some reason. So hey, this is great for you guys. He also confirms what I've been saying on this channel for quite some time this will be the most balanced console they've ever made and by multiple miles he also does confirm that there is no need for an iterative upgrade three or four years after project scarlet releases but if i were jeff i would have asked him specifically about the lockhart leaks the low-end dev kits he did not do that he asked him about some type of iterative upgrade and phil responded as such no we will not need an upgrade three or four years out and he's right this thing is going to be massively powerful. They are not taking the same direction they did in 2013 when they released the Xbox One. They are putting as much power in this box right now for what will likely be 500 bucks. But honestly, from what I've already heard, if it comes out at 399, I feel like they've taken a loss on this box somewhere, which is good for you and I. We save a bit of money. But here's my theory. If there really isn't a second box day one, if they really are only bringing us one high-end xbox holiday 2020 they very well could launch the lower end spec at a later date to replace the lower end consoles now this might sound crazy to some of you but keep in mind companies like nvidia already do this they launch their high-end graphics cards first they get that perception of performance out there and then they release their mid-tier and lower tier cards i understand why they do this a lot of those that are hardcore a lot of those that are hyped end up buying into the high-end performance and the perception of the brand and itself is actually based on that first introduction but it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out a lot of people want to write off some insiders because they were wrong about certain things this past d3 but you can't go from being right about halo infinite's name you can't go from being right about the project scarlet itself the i mean uncovering it bringing it into the light to okay we can't trust you at all for now on all because some e3 stuff went wrong concerning project scarlet we just don't know enough. As I covered in my last video, a lot of executives are just saying everything we want to reveal about Project Scarlet is in the Project Scarlet trailer, and that is when they are asked about that lower end box that was rumored. So I'm not willing to say that there is no lower end box as of right now, and I think that should be okay. I don't think people should not get along because of these types of things. But hey, once more, he confirms there will be no iterative upgrade to Scarlet as we know it now in the next three or four years, or that he doesn't see a need for one 
as of now, but there is no mention of the low-end version of the Xbox. So for some of you, if you want to write that off, I don't blame you. For me, I'm going to hold on to it a little bit longer until I learn some more. It makes sense to keep the X around and not phase it out. You've invested in the hardware, you could reduce it. But keep in mind, there's some back-end costs there to producing a completely separate custom 6 teraflop APU and then moving on to a Zen 2 architecture with Navi. You are now producing two completely different chips in addition to the Xbox One S, which does share Jaguar cores, but has a different GPU architecture altogether. I would consolidate those two. I would keep the S around, reduce its price, consolidate its build costs, produce a Lockhart to replace the X, and produce something like this thing, the Project Scarlet, as we call it now, aka the Xbox Anaconda. The latter of the two would share largely what is the same construction and build process. You're using the same CPU cores. You would just have different GPUs on these two different systems and maybe some different RAM, etc. Uh, it's, it's worth noting that I'm just a guy on the internet that loves talking about this kind of stuff. So, you know, there's probably someone out there that really does that, that hears me say this and they're like, well, there's this and, and there's this and no, and of course, you know, I don't know. It's all from my head here. So, you know, once more, I'm just a guy that likes talking about this stuff. And yes, true, I got a pretty good track record, but I've been wrong before. I've admitted it. If I'm wrong again, I will admit it again. It's not the end of the world. Ultimately, I just need to know more. I'm not entirely convinced, but let me know what you think down below. Also, I encourage all of you guys to check out the source down below. This is a real source. It is a real interview that actually has the real information in the real title of which I am really talking about right now in this real video. It's not something completely different where I link a long thing and I try to get you to scrub through it to find what I'm talking about. Even though what I'm talking about clearly didn't happen in this long thing I expect you to scrub through, everything is there. Have a great time listening to it. It's a good listen. Also, if you haven't checked out the links down below, guys, patrons, thank you guys so much. If you have not commented on the game giveaway post, please do so. Mortal Kombat Premium Edition and more there. That patron link will be down below. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you learned something today, hey, I appreciate it. Hit the like button. It really helps. Maybe share this with a buddy or two if you get a second. And of course, if you're new and into this kind of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We are on our way to 50k. We are headed that way. So thank you guys so much. Once again, check out my last video. I'm Dealer. I'm out.